Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Now I've been promising regular viewers I will change the opening, the opening speech, but I don't know what to say. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. But that is basically what I do for you new viewers. I do review all sorts of photographic, audio and video products. Now today we're looking at a, a really interesting piece of kit that I recently purchased and it is the Black Magic uh, Speed Editor for DaVinci Resolve 17. I think it works in 15 and 16, um, but I bought it for 17 and here it is. And it's a great piece of kit. It actually replaces a lot of keyboard shortcuts um, as well as the mouse and what have you. Although I still use it in combination with a keyboard, um, uh, but I bought it um, to primarily for use on my PC, ironically. Now, I'm a Mac user. I've been using Macs for oh, many, many years now. And I use Final Cut Pro 10 for all my video editing. And obviously I use Lightroom and I use Luminar for my photo editing. Um, but my video editing, I use Final Cut Pro 10. I've been using it pretty much for, uh, well, since it came out. And I really love the software, but I came across an issue and it really irritated me actually. My telecine machine only works with a PC. It's PC software. The software is made specifically for the cine transfer machine. It's a professional machine, um, transfers in HD, but it has to go to a PC. Or you could use a dual booting Mac and run it on the PC side of a Mac. But at the end of the day, it's got to be PC software, Windows 10. I think it works on Windows 11. Um, I got a bit frustrated with doing the capturing on my PC, then having to export it to be able to edit in Final Cut Pro on my Mac. So I thought, well, I shall buy the right software to edit it on the PC, reluctantly. Um, so what I did, I purchased the Blackmagic um, a speed editor, because at the moment it's bundled with DaVinci Resolve 17 Studio. Now that cost 250 quid on its own. This was 330 quid. So it made complete sense to spend the extra, well, less than 100 quid, 80 quid, and get the speed editor as well as the software. And that's what I've done. And I can, I've installed the software on two computers. The license covers two computers. So I've installed it on me. Uh, Mac Mini, my main edit program or my main edit computer here, and I've installed it on my PC for doing the Cine transfers. And that's primarily, as I say, where this edit controller was originally purchased for. But I'm really enjoying using it. And I'm just going to go through a very quick, um, I say very quick, a quick review of what the, you know this is capable of. Um, now this isn't a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination, so please don't take it as one. I'm very new to DaVinci Resolve, so I'm learning as, as much uh, as I'm using it. I'm also watching a lot of YouTube videos on how to use DaVinci Resolve, and it is a very powerful bit of software. It's an incredible piece of software. Um, so, you know, if you are a PC user, I think you'll find DaVinci Resolve is fantastic. Um, and it isn't a subscription model, unlike Adobe Premiere. Once you've purchased it, you own it. So, you know, I think that is great. Same with Final Cut Pro. I just wish that they had the same licensing arrangement as what uh, Apple does with Final Cut Pro. I can put Final Cut Pro on all my Macs and not worry about additional licenses. With this software, it only covers for use on two computers. Well, that's fine for me. I've got it, as I said earlier, on my PC for me cine editing, and I've got it on my Mac here for video editing. So let's have a quick look now at the hardware and have a quick look of uh, what it can do. So this is the hardware. Now you can see here, it's got a main jog shuttle, which is great for going through your edits. And I could, I'll show you how useful that really, really is. And there's three positions this jog shuttle can be used in. Uh, jog mode, um, sort of scan mode, where it spins through the video really quick, and still mode, where it's really, really slow. Um, You've got source and timeline. So um, if we look at the computer here, you can see if I click on source, I can then use a jog shuttle to go through the source material and um, that works fantastic. It's nice and smooth, very, very responsive. Or you can go through it at a 
fast rate using um, the scan mode and that'll just scan through your footage, all your rushes. You see, I don't know if you can see the orange box around the clips. That's spinning through now, all those clips really, really fast. And it's absolutely excellent. Yeah, so it's great if you want to have a quick spin through your source material to see what you have. That is a great way of doing it, using the scan mode on the jog shuttle. So much easier than using a mouse. But in the jog mode, very, very accurate. You can just, you know, spin that through nice and accurately. So that's basically what we've got there. On this side, you've got your, your, you can mark your in and outs. You can mark trim in and outs. Um, the center section, you've got a multicam. Basically, this whole section here is for your multicam editing. Now, I do a lot, well, virtually all my videos are done using multicam. So this is a feature that I very much want to play with, although I'm not going to demonstrate it. I haven't even uh, set it up for multicam editing. Uh, I've been doing that entirely in Final Cut Pro because I do do a multicam shoot and all you regular viewers actually do appreciate and enjoy the different angles that I use. Um, actually, while we're talking about that, my main angle today is my Nikon ZFC. That's got its 40mm uh, Z mount lens fitted to it. That's the main camera angle, which is that one. The second camera angle, which is my Sony A6600 with the Sigma 18 to 50 lens fitted to it. That is um, the wide shot there, getting a nice generic wide shot. And I've got a close up shot here, uh, and that is my Sony ZV-1, which is getting the close ups of the um, uh, Blackmagic uh, speed editor. And then uh, the main camera and the video signal, the computer signal, is being fed into my um, uh, Atomos cast, Atomos Ninja cast thing. And then what I will do, I will then combine all these edits together uh, and uh, do a multicam edit in Final Cut Pro. In fact, I will play with it in DaVinci Resolve as well. Um, and then I'll let you know in another video how I get on with that. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I don't know yet. Um, so yeah, so effectively then, we've got um, this controller here, as I say, um, and that's the set middle section for multicam. And then on the top here, you've got various other things you can do. Um, and, and I'm just going to quickly go through some of the, some of the things that it can do. It's got a big red button for full screen. So if you want to view it full screen, you can do that and you can spin through it fast as well in full screen. Again, nice and easy to be able to just hit one button and you're there. Um, but let's go back to some of these clips and we're going to drop it onto the uh, timeline using cut mode. I think we're in cut mode, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we're in cut mode now. If you see on the screen here, there's your various modes. You've got cut, you've got edit mode. Works great in edit mode. I've got the layout slightly different on my um, source monitor here so I can see what I'm looking at. But we go back to edit mode. Um, let's see, we go back to that clip. Now, if we just want to drop that straight onto the timeline, we just hit the append button, which is this one here. Click on append. Straight in, look at that, straight in. And you can spin it again, use the scan mode to spin through the clips. I tend to use the jog mode because it's, it's a lot more accurate. So I can trim that shot now, the in point on that shot so easily. Just hit the, hold in the trim in button and then that trims that in. Right, so, so if we want to start it, say, just there, that's great. And then we can go to the out point. I'm using the keyboard here just to go to the out point of the clip and then we can trim the out of that clip where we want it to come out again holding the trim out button and using the jog wheel will come out there um, we want to drop another clip in so let's drop in say that one use the append button what the append does that takes it to the end of the timeline basically the end of the last clip and it drops the video into that timeline at the end that's what the append does you can do insert editing overwriting you can do it all using the um, speed editor i think that's brilliant so again if we go back to the um where i dropped the in point of where i dropped that in now we've got it the in point there again i can trim out and trim in there as well so that's trimming the out point of the previous clip 
trim will be in of the clip I've just dropped in. So let's take that in, say there. Perfect. And I can drop a transition straight into that as well. So I'm going to just uh, click transition and you see it's dropped a transition straight in over that clip. So let's go full screen and I'll just play that using the space bar and look at that. So hit again, hit, hit that button and that comes back out. Um, now what we can do is adjust the, um, the length of that dissolve. So how many seconds or frames that dissolve will go for. And on the keyboard, you've got a, transi you've got a transition button here uh, that will adjust the actual transition length. So if we hold that in, you can see there, that's going smaller. So that's gonna be a fast transition. Let's just play that back. See how fast that was? Or we can go, um, we can make that longer. That is awesome. And if you notice, I didn't have to have the cursor here, uh, didn't have to be over the actual um, join. Um, it can be anywhere, but it knows instinctively that you want it over uh, that join to adjust that particular length of that transition. Again, hit the uh, stop play button. I class it as a uh, play, uh, space, space bar, do that. And then that changes, that's brilliant. Now I can also adjust the audio levels. So you just hold in the audio levels uh, button here and turn the jog wheel. And can you see the waveform going up? So the audio levels are going up. Now they're gonna distort, we're going up really high there. So if I play that, you can see the red bars on the, you can see the red bar has gone up really high there. If I take the audio levels right down to nothing, then there's no audio. So, you know, brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. And you can do all sorts of other things with this particular speed editor. And I've already done some uh, video editing uh, with my Cine that I capture really quick and easy. And that's what I'm loving about using this controller. It's also gonna make my workflow a, a lot easier than having to do it like I had to, well, I have been doing it for years, is, you know, transferring the output of the material, transferring it to the, uh, to the Mac for editing in Final Cut Pro, then making the masters from that. I can do it all in one program now on one computer. So, um, that is great. Now, it is designed uh, to be used with DaVinci Resolve Studio, but I have tried it with DaVinci Resolve, which is the free version. It seems to work okay, but it seems to be a bit patchy. Um, but that may well be me. I may, maybe I haven't got my other computer set up correctly. But again, I'm sure somebody in my audience, I know Phil in Bristol, he will know this piece of kit inside out. So Phil, if you're watching this, let me know, does it work with DaVinci Resolve? I'd really appreciate that, as opposed to DaVinci Resolve Studio. Um, and if you can give me any other tips on uh, what this can do to help speed up my editing, that would be fantastic. But um, I'm loving the speed of this and what it can do anyway. It's USB-C into your computer. So it's a USB-C lead out there, goes straight into the computer, but it's Bluetooth as well. So you can charge it up via USB-C and you can use it uh, Bluetooth. I haven't done that. Um, I would think it's gonna be a bit laggy, but I don't know. Uh, but I'm using it via USB-C connection. Um, it's beautifully made. It is so solid, it's not, you know, it's not a cheap plastic piece of kit. It's a very, very well made piece of kit and a very well designed piece of kit, which I'm finding pretty much all Blackmagic stuff is extremely well designed. I use the A10 Mini Pro on a regular basis. Uh, ironically today, I'm not, I'm using my Atomos Ninja Cast um, today, but I, I use either or, but I find it's, uh, you know, Blackmagic stuff is really, really good. So. Yeah, that's basically an overview. Now it does work in the um, uh, edit mode as well. So you can see the scroll bar will go through that uh, quite happily in edit mode. Um, and uh, audio levels you can adjust in edit mode. You, see the audio, you can see that clear actually, the audio levels going up and down there. 
uh, we can make that timeline look a bit bigger so you can see that easier. So your audio level is going up and down there. Now the other uh, really, really nifty thing is, let's go back to, um, to this mode. Now it's, it's great for cutting in and out as well. So it's got two big cut in and out buttons. So if we, let's say we want to cut out, cut, let's mark an in point there, mark an out point there. And you can see it's shown it on the display here where you marked it in and out and just hit delete on the keyboard. And now it's gone. And that's what I'm using a lot with me Cine editing. Because when I'm transferring Cine, there's always big gaps, uh, you know, uh, where people haven't filmed anything and it's gone, uh, you know, black or whatever. I can extremely quickly cut in and, you know, create um, cuts. And that is really going to speed up my editing. So you can see how easy it is to use this edit controller. And I think it's great. It's, it's a great alternative to a keyboard and mouse. And I'm finding the jog, the jog wheel is so much more responsive than using the mouse. Um, and, uh, you know, you can do so much more with this and it's all in one unit. It doesn't replace the keyboard. I'm finding I'm still having to use certain keys on the keyboard, you know, for deleting things um, and, and what have you, um, and going using the mouse to uh, quickly click on what, you know, clip you want to put in next so you can append that easy enough, you know. Um, it is, you know, it, it is fantastic, but it won't replace your keyboard and the mouse. I think it, they work in conjunction with each other, but it will certainly help speed up your editing. And I'm very, very new to DaVinci Resolve. So as I've got more used to DaVinci Resolve, I can believe, I really do believe it's going to speed up the editing even more. So there we go. That's a quick look, and it is a quick look, at the DaVinci Resolve speed editor for uh, uh, Resolve 17 Studio. And as I say, if you haven't got the Studio version, you're looking at buying the Studio version, it's very, very well worthwhile looking at the Edit Controller and buying that with it because the software comes bundled with the controller. And I think that is, you know, fantastic. So well done, Blackmagic. I mean, you know, you're, you're on a winner there. Um, it's a shame there isn't a similar de device for Final Cut Pro. Maybe there is, and I just don't know about it. Again, if anyone out there does know of a similar device for Final Cut Pro, let me know, that'd be fantastic. So, um, but actually, this is also brilliant because, because it's Bluetooth controllable, it's very, it's so easy to switch between my two computers. So if you are working in different studios and you need, need to take this with you, um, pack it in a little case and off you go. It'll work, you know, pretty much anywhere. So I'm working it on cross platforms. And again, that's brilliant. It'll work with PC and with Mac. So, um, and I've proven that because it is working on my Mac beautifully, works on my PC beautifully. So there we go, Black Magic. It's a winner. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this very short video useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and hit the like button if you like the content of my videos. I really, really appreciate that. Helps me grow the channel as well. And please leave any comments in the comments section. That really is helpful. I will put in the description a link to where you can buy this device from. Um, and that's, that helps me, it'd be an Amazon affiliate link, so that's always helpful. So I'll probably put a Wex link as well, because I bought this from Wex Photographic. I do buy a lot of my stuff from Wex Photographic in the UK. I find they're a great supplier. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography, audio and podcasting. Cheers for now. Bye. Bye.